Dear Mr. Nordhoff, I cannot describe my mood when I learned of your departure. I'm not ashamed to say that I cried when the choir master read your letter to the choir. Es würde mir zu Gewissheit. Gottes Wille kennt kein Warum. I accepted it as fact. God's will knows no why. Ich wollte tapfer sein, das Unvermeidliche tragen und doch musste ich unterlegen. Nun sagen Sie mir bitte, aber es in Ihrem Interesse liegt. I wanted to be unfair. courageous, bearing the unavoidable, but I had to succumb. Now tell me please whether it is in your interest that we get to know each other more closely, to test each other. Dear Miss Lauber, our correspondence has reached a point beyond which it can only be advantageously conducted if we are completely honest with ourselves and each other. And this condition forces me to decide whether I, for the first time in my life, should trust a person with things that I have heretofore kept for myself at the very depths of the shrine of my heart. Wir leben in einer schweren Zeit. Trug und Schein verhüllen die Wahrheit. Alle Menschen tragen irgendwelche hard Maske. times. Swindles and shams cloak the truth. Everyone wears some kind of mask. Raw lust and cupidity show up everywhere. And it is a stroke of luck, a blessing, if one can remain straight and unbowed, if one does not succumb to temptation and can salvage one's faith and yearning for what is good, true and noble. Hello and welcome. My name is Andrew Stewart Bergerson, and I'm here to introduce you to an exciting new initiative in the public humanities, focusing on love letters from Nazi Germany. This and the subsequent lectures in this series are designed to prepare you for the forthcoming workshop entitled Writing Yourself into History. You do not have to speak German in order to be able to participate. No special knowledge is required. All you need is an interest in Nazi Germany and a curiosity about its relevance to our world. This initial lecture will cover six topics. I will begin by introducing myself to you and telling you a little bit more about the two people whose love letters stand at the core of everything that we will be doing here. Then, I will describe the Public Humanities Project centering on this correspondence the play that we have created based on these letters, and the workshop where you will be given a chance to attend the performance and respond to it. At the end of my talk, I want to say a few words about the benefits of the public humanities for our civil society and our democratic form of government. I have been fascinated by the history of Nazi Germany since I was a boy. My interest began with the Holocaust, stemming from the fact that I'm Jewish. But during my studies at Cornell University and at the University of Edinburgh, that interest grew into a desire to learn more about modern German history in general. During my doctoral studies at the University of Chicago, I learned how to formulate the questions that had preoccupied me since I was a boy. What role did ordinary Germans play in the Nazi revolution? How did they respond? to the ethical and political challenges of the Nazi regime? In what ways are they responsible for the Nazi crimes against humanity? In my search for answers, I have come to rely on two schools of scholarship, the history of everyday life and interdisciplinary German studies more generally. I am now a professor of history and public humanities at the University of Missouri in Kansas City, and I've written three books and numerous articles on these topics all focusing on the everyday practices of ordinary Germans, what they did, how they did it, and with what consequences. My first major research project involved interviews with elderly Germans in the town of Hildesheim in the state of Lower Saxony in northern Germany. I lived there for several years so that I could explore everyday life before, during, and after the Third Reich through their experiences. In more recent projects, I've worked collaboratively with scholars in other disciplines to write a book about taking responsibility for the past and the present. 
as well as a book about the ruptures in everyday life as viewed by ordinary Germans over the course of the 20th century. These collaborative projects enabled me to see the same problems from, mutual, from multiple perspectives. The letter project that I want to describe to you today also brings together scholars from multiple disciplines across the humanities to work collaboratively on the same project from their different perspectives. And it also explores the practices of ordinary Germans in the Third Reich, but this time with a focus on letter writing. Everything we do here in this project, the play and the workshop, centers around the letters of Hilde Laube and Roland Nordhoff, two ordinary Germans who lived in a small village in the state of Saxony in southeastern Germany. By ordinary, I mean that they were neither ardent Nazis nor active resistance fighters, neither victims of Nazi crimes nor direct perpetrators. During the Third Reich, they attempted to live as normal lives as possible, more or less as they had lived before. They did their work, they went to school, they cleaned their houses, they attended concerts, they read books. Hilda and Roland met in a local church choir, and they began to exchange letters in 1938 after Roland was transferred to another village in Saxony for work. Their correspondence continued over nine years until Roland returned from the Second World War in 1937. Comprising thousands of letters, often written on a daily basis, their correspondence may be the largest and most consistent set of letters that we have from this period of modern German history. You will learn more about the letters, the authors, and their historical con context in subsequent lectures. They offer us a unique glimpse into the everyday lives of ordinary Germans before, during, and after the Second World War. The story of the letter project began some years ago when I was back in Hildesheim on a research trip. I was approached by one of Hilda and Roland's children. He had heard of my research, was convinced of the value of his parents' letters as an historical source, and offered the whole correspondence to me for my research. I was not interested. It was not the first person that a person, first time that a person approached me with dusty treasures from their attic. I had just collected a bunch of new material from Hildesheim that I wanted to study, and I did not wish to expand the scope of my research at this time. He was quite persistent, though, and the next time that I returned to Hildesheim, he found me again and tried to convince me again to take on this project. I dismissed his offer again. In retrospect, I got very lucky that my stubbornness did not cost me this amazing source. Only the third time did I realize how foolish I had been, and I accepted his offer. Hilda and Roland's letters now stand at the center of a project called Trug und Schein, meaning swindles and shams, the name of our project comes from Roland's letter from the 16th of May, 1938, in which he complains about the seeming insincerity of the people around him. It seems to me, and to the first group of American and German students who worked with me to transcribe the letters from that period, that this phrase captured an important tension in the heart of everyday life in Nazi Germany. Trug und Schein is an international intergenerational and intermedial project in the public humanities designed to encourage discussion about the Nazi past and its relevant to the present. The concept was developed initially in 2011 by me and Dr. Thomas Munchik, the director of radio programming at the independent radio station in Hildesheim called Radio Tonkula. To make these letters accessible to the public, we wanted to combine the benefits of the radio, the web, and face-to-face -face encounters. Dr. Munchik and I imagined a community-based project that allowed the public to collaborate with trained scholars in preparing the letters for publication and in interpreting their meaning. Since 2011, the project has expanded to include Germany, Austria, the Netherlands, and the United States. 
working through a cloud-based bibliographic software called Zotero. Two people work always work together in pairs to transcribe, tag, cross-check, and add hot links to the letters according to the standards set by the group, uh, by the participants of, in the project as a whole. Each partner brings different skills to bear. Interns work with professors, German speakers with non-German speakers, college students with senior citizens, the technically proficient who know, with those who know how to read the old German handwriting, and historians with ethnographers, literary scholars, social workers, and teachers. To their academic knowledge, they also bring to bear the stories from their own families, as well as their thoughts about the past and its relevance to the present. The process of historical scholarship thus becomes the foundation for face-to-face -face conversations about the Nazi past that cross social barriers. We publicize the letters in two medias. With the help of two voice actors, Dr. Munchik produces radio programs for broadcasting and download. We also blog the letters on a website where the public can read the letters, comment on them, and even submit their own interpretations of the letters for publication. Thus far, we have published the letters from 1938 to 1941, always approximately 75 years after the date that they were mailed. The blog in turn serves as a foundation for face-to-face -face discussions about the past in high schools, in university seminars, among families in their living room, and soon enough among audience members in a play based on the same letters. One current editor of the blog is Dr. Laura Fonnenbroek of the University of Groningen in the Netherlands. You will meet her again in a subsequent lecture where she will tell you more about the biographies and circumstances of the letter writers. The other current editor of the blog is Dr. Christina Hartig of the University of Hamburg in Germany. She will talk to you about letters as historical sources and describe this set of correspondence in particular. Like me, they too work in the fields of history of the everyday, of the everyday public history, and interdisciplinary German studies. Over the years, as I've told people about Tulgenschein here in the United States, they often show real interest in reading the letters. They ask me whether we are translating the letters into English. Several people have also suggested that the letters would make great material for a play or a film. In the summer of 2016, we decided that we had transcribed enough of the letters to be able to bring some of them to an American audience in the form of a play and a workshop. So I asked all of the participants in Trugunschein to nominate their favorite letters from the first few years of the correspondence for inclusion in a play. People suggested letters for many reasons, because that particular letter was well-written or dramatic, because it offered insight into some aspect of their personalities, attitudes, relationship, or circumstance, because Hilda and Roland referred or responded to important historical events, or because their descriptions seemed to reveal important features of their everyday lives. We also kept in mind what topics might be interesting to an American audience. In the winter of 2017, a team of four Americans translated these 80 or so letters into English. We were supervised by Dr. K. Scott Baker, my colleague here at UMKC in the Department of Foreign Languages and Literatures. Dr. Baker also guided me and Deborah Parker, a teacher from Lee's Summit North High School, in the process of discovering the dramatic content in these letters and organizing them into acts and scenes. I will let him tell you more about the way we did our work and our vision for this play. In his lecture, Dr. Baker will also tell you a little about the tra translations, the, excuse me, the traditions of historical and documentary theater in Germany, which inspired our work. We titled the play, Love in the Age of Hitler, A Courtship in Letters, 1938 to 1940. And you will attend its premiere performance on the 20th of May, 2017, at UMKC's Diastole Scholar Center. The director of the play is Beata Pettigrew, 
Artistic Coordinator for the Theater Department at Johnson County Community College, and she has cast students from Johnson County Community College to play the roles of Hilda and Roland for you. You also see camera teams at the workshop. They will be recording not only the play, but also your reactions to it. These materials will be used to create a documentary film about the workshop for distribution on the web. The director of this film is Dr. Jennifer Friend, another colleague of mine from the School of Education at UMKC. Dr. Pettigrew and Dr. Friend will tell you more about the play and the film in a subsequent le lecture in this series. And finally, I want to introduce you to Dr. Shelly Klein. She is a public historian at the Midwest Center for Holocaust Education. She will be providing you with background information about the Third Reich, the Holocaust, and everyday life in Nazi Germany. All of these scholars will be available to you at the workshop as facilitators. This workshop has been funded by the Missouri Humanities Council with support from the National Endowment for the Humanities and a number of other Kansas City organizations. It is free and public, but invite only, and registration is on a first come first serve basis. It will be an intimate event. Only 60 people from the Kansas City region will be able to attend. 20 through Lee's Summit North High School, 20 through the Midwest Center for Holocaust Education, and 20 through the Shepherd Center of Central Kansas City. All of the actors, teachers, and scholars that are speaking in these lecture series, including the two speakers from Europe, will all be at your disposal during the workshop to answer questions and guide conversations. The translated letters will be available to you if you wish to read more of the original sources. You will then be asked to explore the relevance of the Nazi past to your family histories, to your personal experiences, and to our contemporary world. And by the way, lunch will be provided and the facilities are handicapped accessible. The guiding question of this collective process will be, what can we learn from these letters about the German past? At the same time, we will also be asking, what can we learn from these letters about the American present? What then do we mean by writing yourself into history? The workshop title refers to the fact that letter writing is never a wholly private matter, even when it comes to love letters. When we write letters, we do so in order to maintain or build a relationship across space and time. But to do so, we must not only take stock of the present, but also anticipate the future. Particularly in the context of a courtship, the letter writers must write their aspirations for the relationship into an imaginary future in the hopes that it might be realized. In the case of Hilda and Roland, they increasingly had to write their story of their growing love into a Nazi society, gearing up for war and genocide. How did Hilda and Roland make sense of the Nazi present in the past? And with what implications for themselves, their loved ones, and the other people around them? At the same time, we want you also to write your story into their history as well. How do you, as Americans today, make sense of the Nazi past in the present? How do you relate it to your history? What meanings does it have for your life today? My goal as the organizer of this project is to promote this engagement with the Nazi past and document your reactions. To that end, the film crews will record your individual responses to the docu documentary. Or if you feel more comfortable, you can also record your own responses yourself using portable electronic devices. Your responses may be brief, from only one to three minutes. And the workshop facilitators will be present to assist you if you would like them to help you in formulating your thoughts. To conclude this first lecture, I would like to say a final word about the interdisciplinary nature of this workshop. Although the letters were written in the past, you do not have to respond to them as a historian. You may be more interested in them for their literary qualities, 
or for what they tell you about German culture, society, language, or politics. You may be more interested in how they relate to your family's story. For instance, as Americans who immigrated from Germany, or who fought in the war, or who died in the Holocaust. You may be interested in how we adapted the letters into a play and a blog, or in how the actors performed it. Or maybe you are interested in what everyday life under the Nazis can tell us today about the United States in our world. You can respond to the material in any way you see fit. You should not feel as if you need to be a professor to answer these questions. This is not a test of your knowledge. We are interested in your personal responses to the letters and the play, and to what happens when we discuss our perspectives together as a group of citizens. I do insist, however, that you abide by the university's rules for scholarly discourse. That means that we must all ground our opinions in evidence, listen to one another without interrupting, and treat all people with respect at all times. These principles stand at the core not only of scholarship, but also of a civil society. We framed this entire project in terms of the humanities for this reason. Discussions about human culture, language, history, and behavior are discussions about who we were, who we are, and who we wish to be. The humanistic disciplines teach us how to appreciate and evaluate these human experiences and the varied forms of human expression. We begin this workshop by validating the experience and the expression of two strangers, a pair of ordinary Germans writing love letters during the Third Reich, and only after viewing the world from their perspective do we engage with them critically. But remember that criticism does not just mean negative evaluations. Criticism means responding thoughtfully to what others have said and done, analyzing and interpreting, but always in order to more fully understand. The humanities teach respect both during both stages of engagement, not only when we hearken closely to others, but also when we take them seriously enough to respond to them with our own thoughts. The public humanities bring these crucial discussions out of books, classrooms, and libraries and into the public sphere, where the meaning of our human expressions and our human experiences are determined all the more by us in common. The benefit of the public humanities do not lie in knowledge acquisition alone, but in practicing these crucial skills of respectful engagement about the human endeavor. A workshop in the public humanities, like this one, is therefore particularly appropriate for a topic like the Nazi past, since the issues at stake then and now concern the very civility of our civil society. I've been a student of Nazi Germany for most of my life, but I am still convinced that we still have a lot to learn from people like Hilda and Roland, and that I have a lot to learn from discussing these letters with you. I look forward to discovering what we might learn about this workshop together.